research and innovation in Futuris. In a part of southern Kenya where malnutrition is rife, Stanley is an active three-year-old boy. Along with hundreds of other Kenyan youngsters, he's part of a research project aimed at fighting child malnutrition in Africa. The findings so far have surprised researchers. School dinners at this school include an unusual experiment. Scientists are looking at two varieties of cassava, a major source of carbohydrate in Africa. Researchers hope that adding micronutrients to local staple foodstuffs will help fight malnutrition. In sub-Saharan Africa, 70% of, uh, of the intake comes from the staple food like, like cassava, like this, or maize, or millet, or sorghum. And those staple foods do not, con do not contain a lot of micronutrients. So if we can increase the micronutrient content, for example, if this cassava can be yellow, like we're testing here, um, the people already take a little bit of vitamin A via the cassava. And that would be already have a great, that would have a great impact. Yellow cassava is richer in vitamin A than the white variety, but there's less of it about. Scientists want to know if including yellow cassava in the diet regularly would improve the health of malnourished children. So researchers pitched in for some science-based cooking. We peel and boil white and yellow cassava separately for around 45 minutes. We then add vegetable oil and mash to get yellow and white cassava puree. Both types of cassava mash are then served to different groups of young volunteers. For some, it's their only proper meal of the day. Each child gets the same amount of food every day during the study, depending on their ages. It's between 375 and 400 grams for the younger ones and 425 to 450 grams for the older children. Yellow cassava has higher levels of beta-carotene, a pigment that the body can easily convert into vitamin A. Researchers think that yellow cassava can provide children with around 50% of their daily vitamin A needs, but they need to confirm that in the lab. Similar. We can quantify the intake, and then we see the difference. We see their blood level rise, hopefully, and then we know exactly how much beta-carotene made that blood level go up like that. And then we can calculate how good you will absorb the beta-carotene from the cassava into your body. Vitamin A is just one of many micronutrients that African and European researchers are investigating in the fight against child malnutrition in Africa. In a village near Mombasa, it's lunchtime for Stanley. His mother laces his normal maize flour porridge with a special blend containing an iron supplement. Scientists want to know if the mineral is improving Stanley's cognitive development. His mother has no doubts about that. Since the study started, I feed Stanley every day with this iron-enriched meal. He loves this porridge. And I think that thanks to this, he is more active and healthier than other children of his age. And that's exactly what researchers are trying to establish. They monitor every detail of Stanley's daily activities. I follow him for about an hour. I note who he communicates with, how much he speaks or how he vocalizes. I also look at his mobility, if he's standing, sitting, running or playing, whether he's alone or with somebody else. And I watch his emotions, like anger, happiness or sadness, and his behavior. Stanley also goes to a nearby clinic where he undergoes extra examinations. We measure his responses to various stimuli, both sound and vision. We play games with him that he knows, and we track his reactions, his reactivity and his body language.
Developmental psychologists compare data from children receiving doses of iron and those given a placebo. They think small doses of iron or zinc can have a major impact in a child's development. We're looking at their activity levels because that's the one that is really most sensitive to iron issues. So, um, you know, how much they're able to interact with their environment. And the uh, theoretical construct is that if you, if you engage with your environment more, you learn more and you develop more quickly. But researchers fear that there's the possibility of having too much of a good thing. At this clinic in Western Kenya, hundreds of patients are diagnosed with malaria every year. Some studies have highlighted a link between iron intake and a vulnerability to malaria, especially among pregnant women and newborn babies. So the clinic has engaged volunteers in a study to assess whether diets overly rich in iron increase the number of cases. When you're pregnant here in Kenya, you're often prescribed iron pills. The scientists explained that if you also add more iron to the food, that could pose a problem. So I volunteered to help them understand. Researchers hope to determine how much iron intake is good and safe for the health of expectant women and their babies. Scientists give volunteers maize flour that's blended with iron supplement in the clinic's labs and then track their health record. It seems there is an effect of uh, iron on malaria parasites, but we do not know um, to what extent, uh, whether that's very harmful or not very harmful. So that is uh, one of our goals here. We want to be able to explain the relationship that, that is there between iron supplementation and, uh, and malaria. Um, does, it malaria, does it make malaria worse, or does it just leave it as it is? While waiting for the final conclusions from the research, scientists are convinced that the right doses of micronutrients added to certain staple foods can help fight child malnutrition in Africa. They say their next big challenge will be how to provide affordable enriched food to a widely rural, low-income and often isolated population. But they already have some ideas. We are trying to convince food industries also to go for an economy of scale, which means that they reduce the um, uh, profit they can make uh, on a product. But uh, opening up a big market of uh, people who have a lower purchasing power who buy it, so at the end their, their total profit will be more or less the same. It's a solution, researchers hope, that could eventually help fight child malnutrition in Africa.